afternoon, everyone. My name is Dushan Singh. I am from my case team, Manupatra. I'll be making you walk through the uh, pointers that just Shivangi described. So we are going to discuss about how request and matter management is useful for the in-house legal team. So all the CLDs, the corporate legal departments, why is it important to have a request and a matter management tool in-house? So I'll just skip to the next slide first. So when in the next slide, I'll show you the challenges that are there. So these are the challenges that the corporate legal department usually faces. First of all, multiple requests from multiple departments. So let's say you have a centralized legal department and you have different uh, you know, units, Pan India or all, of, all around the globe with di different departments in them. So you might re uh, re uh, receive requests from multiple departments. So how will you identify which request is valid, which is invalid? Or how do you even receive requests from different departments? Maybe verbal, maybe through a mail, maybe through a WhatsApp or a text message or somebody is passing by you, he delivers that message to you verbally. But then how do you keep a track of it? So that is the major challenge that the corporate legal departments face nowadays because multiple requests are coming on on a daily basis. Secondly, again, because multiple uh, uh, requests are coming on a daily basis, not all requests are valid. Not all requests are supposed to get uh, converted into a matter. You can even solve those matters internally. So again, validation of a particular request is another major challenge that any corporate legal department might face. Next is any supporting documents that the corporate legal department wants to upload in relation to a particular request or a matter. Where do you keep it? On your local drive or your hard drive, pen drive or on the cloud. But here we have, a, we have everything under a single umbrella. Same goes for the uh, communication that you need to have between the team members. So uh, these tools help you to you know collaborate with your team members under the single umbrella and you can just pass on your messages and updates on any of the particular topic to your team members just through the same platform. Last is uh, tasks. So me being a legal department head and I want to assign a task to any of my team members. Let, let's say you want to draft this particular thing or you want to have a re you review of this particular document or you have a quote appearing or you need to entertain this particular request. So there can be different type, type of tasks. So how do I define those tasks to those different members? Again, I, I'll have to do it verbally or send a mail or, you know, track it over a, a, a calendar. But in this, uh, like these kind of tools, this can be done in uh, like under the same umbrella. So it's a collaborative tool as well. Again, coming back to the outside counsel. So not even the uh, corporate legal departments, but there are matters where the outside counsels are also involved. So how do you, you know, how do you make them a part of your uh, matter management? So that also I'll make you walk through. Next is alerts. So now you have a next hearing date or maybe today a, a, an order has been released or maybe there's a task that is assigned to you by your, by your legal head or maybe there's a cause list that has been released on the e-court website. How do you get a notification of it? You will have to search down through you know, 10,000 plus e-court websites all around India and then you'll have to find these relevant information that can be handy, that can be in place with you with the help of such kind of tools. I'll show, showcase that part as well. Lastly, the report generation. So it's a very major feature for corporate legal departments to generate reports for their higher management, maybe annually or maybe uh, half yearly, because even the budgets are aligned to those corporate legal departments. So they have to, you know, portray and they have to showcase everything like what all challenges they faced, what all uh, work they did, what all tasks they performed, what was the um, uh, entire uh, 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 time entry that they have done, what was the expense they have created. So everything they need to put, a, put in a particular report and they need to portray it to their higher management. So how do they do that? Again, the similar kind of a tool can help you under the same umbrella. Coming to the next slide. So these are the questions that are most commonly asked that might come in your mind as well. How to create a unified workflow to manage requests from multiple departments, right? So I'll just come to that tool. I'll just show you how we do that. So this is our this is our corporate legal department tool. Now, uh, how do I just you know create a request? So once you will all be having your different login credentials. Once you log in, you just need to create different forms from here. So you can so what a corporate legal department does is he can create different forms for different departments, maybe even even for different geographical locations. Once done, they can just assign those uh, these uh, 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 
forms to those particular departments so that whenever any person from that particular department needs to generate a request for any particular matter, he can simply just have a view of this particular form, fill in these relevant information that the corporate legal department requires from them and just send it to them. So this is a documented request that has been sent from any department to the corporate legal department. Right. So this is all documented and the legal department is having it in under one place. So these are all the requests from that I have created. Now I, I must be receiving certain requests as well. So that will come under request, request assigned to me. Right. So these are the requests that are assigned to me or I have received it from the different departments. So everything will be available here. So this one, when I see the document, the document, the department version that I have received from different department, if I have amended or made any changes in that particular form, that will be a new version of that particular request. Coming back to the presentation with the second question, how to create a centralized repository for all the documents, data and information to find the right document at the right time. Now, let's say you have a corporate legal department in place and you have 500 cases going on. In those 500 cases, you might be having multiple documents that you have uploaded or maybe you have handy hard copies of it. You're keeping it here and there in a high hard drive in a pen drive or on the cloud itself. So why not just keep it in a centralized repository at a single at a single place? Coming back to the portal, so we have the centralized repository of documents here. So you will find all your relevant documents matter-wise here uh, in your centralized document repository and providing you uh, as, you know, we, we personally, you know, we provide Azure storage, that is a Microsoft Azure. So all the security patches that Microsoft provides will be available with you as well. So all your documents are 256 and bit encrypted. So nobody can penetrate to that and nobody can, you know, do any fishy activities with your documents that you have uploaded, right? Now I'll show you how a document looks like when you have entered, like when you have entered it into a, any particular matter. So let's say these are my matters going on in different web, in different e code websites. So I'll just click on the first matter and I'll see what all documents I have uploaded for this particular matter. So these are the documents that I have uploaded for this particular matter. I can upload any kind of document. There is no uh, file limitation that you can upload only this format or any that format. You can upload any kind of file in this particular form, uh, tool. You can upload any size of a uh, uh, size of a file in this tool. We'll be providing you with one terabyte of Azure storage as well. This is the storage part. Coming back to the uh, document part, what all additional features you can perform with this particular document? So. Let's say you have a corporate legal team of 10 people and they are a part of this particular uh, uh, matter. And But you want that this particular uh, document is confidential. You don't want other team members to have a view of it. So you can simply mark it as confidential and only you will have a view of it. Coming back to this checkout check-in option. So you can even do versioning of any particular document. So by versioning, I mean that on an original document, you can have up to 10 different additional versions of those documents as well. So you, you just need to check it out. It would get downloaded to your uh, local drive. You can edit it and then you can upload it as a new version and it will be available here as a new version. So you can have multiple versions of that document as well. Right. Similarly, if there are certain team members that not that are not a part of this particular matter, but you feel that this document should be shared with them, you can simply share them, share this document with them as well internally. Coming back to my next question. How to, you know, communicate with my team members. As I said, you must be communicating through messages, through mails, calls, or verbally over a call. But how can you do that through the, such kind of tools? Coming back to the tools. So this is the communication part. So you don't need to do anything. You just need to click on the send button. Every information is getting auto-populated. You can select to which all team members you want to convey this message to. What is the note that you want to actually convey? If there is any, any attachment, you can just attach that attachment to the note. And you can simply just click on send. So all your communication that you had with your team members within your team members will be available with you here itself. These are the communication that I had with my team members. Why is this point important? Why is this communication part important? Why have we even incorporated this in our system? Because let's say this is one matter that I'm talking about, but in future you're having a similar kind of a matter. And you want to just come back to this particular matter, which is already, you know, disposed. And you just, you just want to have a view of what all updates were there, what all communications I made with my team members or any of my team members conveyed it to me so that it might be helpful for me for my future cases that are of a similar kind. 
So you have everything documented here. Again, everything under single umbrella. So any communication you want to make, you can make it through the tool itself. You don't have to, you know, use WhatsApp, mails, messages, or verbal communication. You can do it through the tool itself. Just simply click on send button and send your communication to whosoever team member you wish to. Right? Coming back to the slide, the fourth point, how to assign tasks to appropriate tasks and improve productivity. So coming back to the tool itself. So let's say you have a team of 10 members and you have different tasks that you need to perform. So you being the legal head of that, uh, of that corporate legal department, you have assigned certain tasks to your team members. Now, how do you keep a track of it? That which team member has completed the task in, in the given time frame or has not completed the, the task? What is the status of a particular task? So you will, the, the person will have a bird's eye view of all the tasks that have been assigned to different team members. You can even filter it down on the basis of the status that what, which is completed, which are in progress, which are rejected, which are overdue. Everything will available here itself. How do you do that? Just click on this particular task button here. Just select the team member to which whom you want to assign this task to. What kind of a task it is. Just select the due date that till when they need to complete this particular task, the accept date till when they need to, you know, accept or reject this particular request made by the legal head. And if there is any note that you want to attach with the with this particular task, you can do that. If there is any attachment, let's say the task is to review any particular document. So you can upload that particular document and just click on assign task. It will go as a notification to that relevant user as a mail. And he will receive it here as well at the bell icon that a task has been assigned to you that you need to complete within a given time frame, within a given period of time. So again, you can have the complete track of all the tasks that have been assigned to your team members, how they are working on those particular tasks, when are those tasks being completed, what is the status of those tasks, everything is available in front of you under the same umbrella. Coming back to the slide. The next pointer is how to manage the outside counsel. Now, as I said, that not even the, uh, uh, you know, legal department, corporate legal department, but there must be someone from the outside counsel as well involved in this particular matter. How do you do that? How do you even involve them? How do you make them, you know, how do you make them see those particular matters that are affiliated to them? You just need to come to contacts here. When you click on external sources, here you can cre create portals for your external counsels as well. So these are all my external counsels. Now, how does an external counsel portal looks like that? Also, I can show it to you. So this is an external counsel portal that you're seeing right now. You will just see those matters which are affiliated to that particular counsel, right? He will see all the code. He will see every information here. He can even filter it down on the basis of action selected. So every, so this is a outside counsel portals login credential that I've logged in with. He has all the information for the matters that are affiliated to that particular council, which is an outside council, right? He can also see the communication that has been made between the team members in relation, in relation to this particular matter. He can also see the documents that have been uploaded by your corporate legal department in relation to this particular matter. So everything will be available and only these features will be available for the outside council who, who can see only these, the communication and the documents part of this particular matters that have been assigned to that particular council, right? Coming back to the tool or maybe the slide first, the sixth point, how to get real time case alerts on your phone and email. So there are default alerts that these kind of tools usually provide to you. So what kind of alerts do you want to get from, from for such a tool? Maybe an alert that there, there is an order that has been released from the e-code website. Or maybe an alert of the next hearing date that when is my next hearing date for the particular matter. Or maybe the cause list that this cause list has been released from the e code website, but you want it as an alert over a WhatsApp or a message or a mail. So how do you do that? Such kind of tools are integrated with messages and WhatsApp and you will receive notifications alerts on your mail as a text message as well. And the cause list may be on your WhatsApp as well. So. This is, these are the default alerts that are affiliated to such kind of tools. But coming back to the tool, you can even, you know, set additional alerts. So these are the default alerts. But let's say that this particular matter, the first matter that you'll see right now is very important for you as well as for the outside council, or, right? And for your organization. Now you want to set an additional alerts. De apart from the uh, default alerts, you can even set additional alerts. You just need to click on this bell icon. 
and you can set on additional alerts. You can select the frequency that I want to receive an alert five days prior, 10 days prior, or maybe three days prior to the next trading day. You can select it for yourself or for the outside council as well. If it's an outside council, you can just select it and put in their email address and mobile number. They will also receive the alerts. So this is a major feature. This keeps you updated on all the next hearing dates, on all the orders that have been released, or any cause list that have been released on the eCode website. You don't have to go and search or in those 10,000 plus eCode website. Everything will be readily available with you on this portal as well as on your uh, mobile app, mobile phone through a message or a mail or over WhatsApp. So these are the alerts section that you will receive, right? Coming back to the slide and the last point that I wish to cover is how to generate reports on the basis of requests received with multiple departments. Now, obviously, the uh, corporate legal departments need to generate reports on the basis of the requests that they have received annually or maybe half yearly, that how many receipts were valid, how many receipts were invalid, from which department they have received, how many uh, 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 requests, maybe they are receiving uh, extra requests or maybe more requests from the HR department or maybe from the IT department, but they need to present it in front of the uh, 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 higher management as well. So again, with the help of such tools, you can generate any kind of reports as well. Coming back to the tools and in the report section, you can go to just to the report section and you can generate any kind of report that you wish to. It's uh, it's just a click away. You, you just need to use these filters and you will have the report ready of uh, readily available. Just come on action, select it, export it to Excel or export it to PDF. And your report will be ready in just two clicks to just, you know, showcase in front of your higher management anytime. So this is how... This is how your somebody log me out of the session. This is what I was talking about. Can you, can you hear me? So yeah, so this is how you can generate different reports from the tool itself, right? Coming back to the slide. So I have covered these pointers that how do you create a unified workflow by the workflow you'll be able to manage all the requests that you're receiving from different departments next is you can keep all the documents in a centralized repository under a single umbrella you have enough storage of one terabyte and azure storage and the security that microsoft azure is providing that will be available for you as well because this is a very 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 common question that what is the security of my documents because they are highly confidential we cannot just leak it or we cannot just use, use any tool and just upload it there. But then again, giving you that, you know, uh, commitment that Azure is Microsoft's cloud and all the security patches that Microsoft Azure promises is getting with you as well. So it's like 99.9% .9 accurate. Next is the communication. Communication, you can, any updates or any communication that you want to communicate within your team members, you can simply do that. Again, you can assign tasks to your team members anytime. You can just keep a track on those tasks that, that, you, that you have assigned to any of your tasks. You can create outside councils. You can give them the outside council. You can give them their portal so that even they can have a you know, bird's eye view of all the matters that are related to them. right? And they can see all the supporting documents that have been uploaded. So everything will be available with them as well. You just need to create an outside council portal and just provide it to them with them log login credentials. They will have to log in on the same uh, link. Then alerts, you can you will get real-time alerts for everything. For maybe it's a next sharing date, maybe some, some order has been released, maybe some, you know, a task has been assigned to you, or maybe some communication has been made to you. So those kind of alerts you're gonna get on a real-time basis. Lastly, that is, amazing, that is the most important part, part for any corporate legal department is to create reports that I have already shown. So you can also create reports from the single tool. You don't have to go here and there or search for different tools. It is a single umbrella where we have integrated every possible functionality for the corporate legal department to work on and just you know make their uh, work in a complete uh, uh, flawless manner so that they can receive requests, they can convert it into a matter, they can work on those matters, they can upload documents, they can make communications, they can even add outside counsels, and, and simultaneously they, they are receiving real-time alerts as well. And at the end of the day, when they need to generate a report, so every matter is there at one place. So you, you just need to click on the reports, and when you click on the different reports section, you can simply create different reports from here at the reports section.
right? So this is how, you know, so I've just covered how technology can help with you with all these pointers. You can create and manage documents, team communication, outside counsel, real-time alerts, assign monitors, and, you know, assign tasks to different team members in your team. So this was the session all about that I have already covered. Now a quick recap, if you wish to want to have, I'll just come to the challenges and I'll again cover these challenges once again. So one was that multiple requests are being received by the corporate legal departments. You can manage all those requests at a single on a single platform. You can even filter it down that which request is on higher priority, which request is on lower, lower priority. That totally depends on the corporate legal department's wish. They can even validate if the request is valid or not because, you know, if a corporate legal department is receiving 100 requests a day from different departments, so there is a possibility that not all, all the requests that you have received are valid. Some may be invalid, some may be, you know, some may be incorporated or maybe solved internally as well. They, they don't need to be converted into a matter. So this saves a lot of time for the legal department. So they don't, they don't have to work on all the requests that they have received. They can work on the priority based uh, requests that they have, they have received. And they can even, you know, assign those requests to different uh, different team members of their corporate legal department. The admin of that legal department will have the feasibility to assign those requests to different people in your uh, in your legal department so that they can perform the relevant tasks that they, they need to do. Next is the centralized repository. As I said, one terabyte is more than enough. One, one GB of Azure storage, Microsoft Azure Cloud. You can upload any kind of document. You can upload any kind of document of any size. You can do versioning of those documents. You can even mark documents confidential if you don't want other team members to have a view of it. You can share those documents internally, even externally. When it comes to collaboration, so again, so this is a, a, a centralized collaboration tool where all your team members can communicate with each other if they have any update, which might be helpful for you in the future, in future with any other matter that comes up or of a similar type. Again, there must be tasks that every team members need to perform on a daily basis. So, you, you know, tasks can be assigned to different team members or you can even assign tasks to yourself. The admin can even assign a task to himself as well that I need to perform it. But to just to keep a track of it and just to keep a record of it, you can do it through the tool. So that at the time of, you know, generating reports, you know that what all tasks you have performed for this particular matter or what all tasks my team member has performed in this particular matter. Has he completed it in the given time frame or not? So you will have complete bird's eye view of that. Collaboration, outside counsel have already said that if there is any outside counsel involved with any of the uh, matters, you can simply just create their, their uh, portal. They can just log into the system with their email ID and password. And once they are logged in, they will see all the relevant information that are connected to them with the matters that they are affiliated to, all the documents that have been uploaded or any communication that, that has been made between your legal team, uh, your legal team that also will be available and that will be visible to the outside council as well for his referral. Second last is the alerts. As I said, alerts are the major, major section so that you don't miss out on any next hearing date or orders or any tasks that have been assigned to you or even the cause list. Alerts is a very major section. So you will receive those alerts over the mail. You will receive those alerts over a text message. You will, you will receive, you might even receive the cause list on WhatsApp. And coming back to the tool, all these notifications will be available here as well under this bell icon. So again, just like other uh, uh, SaaS based products, this is a bell icon where all the notifications that you will receive will be available there as well. Lastly, the most important part, the generation of reports for the higher management. So you can just do it in a click away. Why? Because as we have covered all these seven pointers above the eight point, now we have all the documents, all the things at a centralized plate and in a, in a centralized repository. We have all the records of the documents, of the communication we made, of the team members, of the work done by the team members, of all the requests being received from different departments. I have it all in one place. Now I want to generate a report for my higher management. I just need to do it in a click. I can do it anytime when it comes under the report section. I can create any kind of report. I can just use these filters. I'll have the result here. I can simply click on action selected, export it to Excel or export it to PDF. And your report is readily available with you in two clicks for your higher management. So these were the challenges that, that I wanted to, you know, cover in this particular uh, webinar. These were the, these are the most commonly asked questions that I've already covered.
So this is how technology might help you and the corporate legal department when you use such kind of a tool. Now I'll give it over to Shivan for any questions. Uh, so, Vishen, we have one question. Uh, can the users check the status of their raised request? Yes. That's a very good question. And I'll just show you how the user can do that. So, simply, so when any request is raised, right? right? So, you just need to come under this request section, request raised by me. So, these are the requests that are raised by me. Now, I want to see what is the status of this particular request that has it been processed or like I can even filter it down from here that had us, it, it is just sent to the council, to the corporate legal department or it is rejected, it is in progress or it has been converted into a matter or the request is still pending, assigned. So yes, the answer is yes. Any user who is requesting something with the corporate legal department can have a view of all his requests that he has made through the portal itself. They just need to come down to this request section, request raised by me, and then they can simply see the status of their requests that have been raised. Thank you for the question. Uh, so we have one more question, Dushan. Uh, please tell if audit trail is maintained for documents. Okay. So, yeah. So, see, this is a centralized document repository here, right? I'll just, I'll just show you inside any particular matter. So this is my matters where I've, I must have uploaded many documents, right? So the first matter, I'll just pick the first matter. This is a live matter that is going on on live tracking mode. And these are all my uh, 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 documents that I have uploaded. So I can anytime have a, a audit history of all these documents available here itself. They are available. So I'll just, you know, if I just log into any of the other accounts, so I can just show it to you that how the audit history looks like. So this is a particular, uh, so these are all your documents that you have uploaded, right? So you will have an audit history. So answer is yes, that you will be able to see all the audit history of all the documents that you have uploaded. In the, that, and even you can even see when that particular document was checked out or downloaded in your local drive or when it was again uploaded with a new version, when was the new version created. So everything will be available in front of you in this tool itself. You don't have to go here, here and there. Thank you, Dushan. So we have one more question. Um, actually, there are two questions, but asked by the same person. Uh, does your tool incorporate the cost benefit analysis for any litigation? And does your tool help to estimate overall litigation expense for a matter? Again, that is a very good question. So coming back to the tool. So yes. So when you come in under the billing section, right? So here is we have a part called expense. So obviously you, so a corporate legal department is given a budget in which they need to perform all their tasks within a given time frame, within a, let's say annual budget have been assigned to them. So they need to perform all their activities within the given uh, uh, budget. So how do they keep a track of what all expenses they have created, right? So they can simply come to the tool under the billing section. They have this expense part where you can simply come, you can add any expense, just click on add item. You can write it down like what kind of expense you have done, billable, non-billable category, what category on what, what uh, particular activity you uh, did that expense for. If it's not available here, you can even add a new category anytime, right? You can write the amount, you can uh, put the receipt date, you can even upload the receipt date or invoice from, from here. You can uh, even select from which user did this particular expense. And if there is any description, you can just simply write it and just add, uh, click on add item. So it will get added here. So these are my expenses that I have done till date, right? And it will even show the expense status that this has been paid or unpaid. Like these are unpaid. The first one is paid. So let's say this, the second was un unpaid, but I have received this amount. So I can simply come and settle it down from here. Just click on pay and simply settle it down from here and it will show you as paid. So the answer is yes, you can even keep a track of all the expenses that you have created on any particular matter and you will have it under a single window. That is the expense part. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for answering that question. Uh, we have one more question. Is a flow chart for operational procedure possible? Flow chart for operational procedure. That means that you want to see that uh, what all work have been done on a particular matter, operational procedure, right? So you don't have a flow chart, but yes, you can see everything. So let's say I'm coming back to this particular matter. When I go inside this particular matter, so I'll be able to see every information in relation to this particular matter. Let's say these that for this matter, I've uploaded this particular document. For this particular matter, I have these court hearings. So these are the procedure that you need to follow. This is when I am inside any particular matter. Let's say any request has been sent from any particular uh, department to the corporate legal department, then it has been converted into a matter. So now I am inside that matter. So here you will be able to see all the documents that have been uploaded, all the court hearings that is coming from the, this part is being auto fetched from the e-court website. Next is the team task for in relation to this particular um, uh, matter, communication that has been made in, in relation to this particular matter, team members who are added to this particular matter, time entries that have been made, Sorry about that. Time entry, like what all time you have invested in performing any particular task, invoices if you have generated, expense if you have done. So yes, that kind of a flowchart you can have when you come any when you come inside any particular matter. So yes, that can be done. Thank you for answering that. Uh, there should be have one more question. Do you have any tool which uses an AI to draft replies or notices? Okay, coming back to the notice part. So here, we have this notice section here. You can create notices. First of all, I'll just show you how to create a notice. So you just need to create, pre, uh, click on create notice. You can create notices from here itself, right? Once you fill in these relevant information, it becomes a part of your notice. And you can even provide us with your letterhead if you want to, you know, uh, 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 create a notice on your letterhead. We will embed it in the system and you'll have a notice on your letterhead as well. And just save it. So it will be saved as a notice, right? And now you need to send this notice to any particular outside party. You can even send those. So you, when, when you have sent this particular notice to any of the outside person, you will see it here. So these are all the notices that I've sent. Now I have sent a notice to someone, but then look, this, there is a very basic query, very basic question and very basic barrier that people face that the receiver who is supposed to receive this particular notice denies that I haven't received this particular notice. So what we have done is we have integrated the government Indian post, speed post with our system. So whenever you send something to that government e-post, you receive a unique number, tracking number. You can simply come here and uh, you know put that tracking number inside the tool. Once you have done that, once you have done that, so you will even, even receive a notification whenever that particular notice have been delivered and have been received by the receiver. And let's say now the receiver has received that particular notice and you have received a rejoinder or maybe a reply to that particular notice. So you can simply come and upload that in the in the store. So you will have a message thread. You will have a complete message thread. One notice you have sent, then you have received a rejoinder from the uh, opponent party that you can simply upload it to the tool and that will be here as a, that will be shown in the tool as a message trail. So you will have a complete track of all the notices that you have created, sent and received. So yes, that can be done through the same tool under the same umbrella. In the notice section, you can create notices, you can send notices. If you have received any notice that can, that can be seen under the received notice part. So these are all the notices that I have received. So everything is available. So yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. And if you want to simply mail it across from here as well, you can do that as well. Then like I want to share this notice with someone else. You, you just need to like in, internally to my uh, team members, you can you just select that team member, you can send it internally as well. So uh, Dushant, I think we can take one more question. Uh, can, you, can your tool read a PDF and give a summary of the matter? Right. So coming back to the tool, very good question. So I'll just, I'll just, with this question, I'll make you walk through with the additional tools that uh, we have integrated in our system. So when you see this settings icon here, so these are the additional tools that we have done. So the question is that you have a PDF and you want to convert it into an editable format or maybe a readable format. So can our system do that? So yes, our system can do that. The last option that you see, that is a PDF to doc converter. So you don't have to search for free filters, free free softwares anywhere on the internet. You can just do it through the tool itself. 
Next is OCR. This is the optical content recognition. So if even if you have a scanned copy and you want to convert it into an edit editable format, you can do that through the tool itself. So these are the additional uh, 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 functionalities that we have provided to the tool just to make your work easier. Again, let's say bundling of PDF is the first option. Let's say you have a topic, single topic, and you have multiple PDFs in relation to that particular topic, but you want to bundle it into one. You can just do that, <clears throat> do that simply through the tool itself. Another, I'll just cover a few more uh, with the same question. If you have like, if you have two documents, one is the original file and one is the editable file and you want to compare those documents, you can even do that through the tool. So that functionality is also available. Just upload both the documents here and you will have a simultaneous comparative view of both the documents, the original one and the editable one. So yes, that can be done as well. Lastly, uh, Everyone, I want to say that we have integrated our tool with eMudra as well. So if you, even if you want to digitally sign any, any document from the tool, you can do that as well. You just need to click on digital signature. You can upload that document and digitally sign that document as well. So covering your PDF to doc converter part, I have show, showcased you the other tools as well that are present in, uh, in our tool uh, currently. So yes, that can be done. Any more questions? I would be happy to answer. Right. So I'll just come to my last slide. So, uh, you know, if you have any queries or if you are interested in an in-depth demo of, you know, any of your, any of our SaaS-based product, this is a litigation management tool that we call my case. We even have a, a contract management tool that we call Manu Contract. We are into compliance management as well that we call Manu Compliant. We are into IPR as well, through which you can even track your IPR <laughs> status and all. So Manu Patra being a brand since past 23 years in the market, Manu Patra and the, all these are Manu Patra's uh, suit of product. My case, Manu, Manu, Manu Contract, Manu Comply and IPR. So here are my contact details. You can either save it. My name is Dushyant Singh. My ID is dushyantadaratmanupatra.com. You can note it down somewhere. Uh, my contact number is given as well. It's 9068764666. So you can anytime drop in a message or you can even connect over a WhatsApp with me if you want an in-depth uh, you know, demo. We can have a demo. It will just take 20 to 25 minutes and I can make you walk through the entire platform. That won't be a problem. And this is our company's uh, email ID. You can even use this if you have any query or if you want to, you know, come to us for any demo purpose, we can do that. And this is our MyCase website. That is mycase.in. You can simply just, you know, go to any browser, just type in mycase.in and uh, you can see the features there as well. Uh, thank you so much, Dushan. So we'll be wrapping up the session now. Uh, dear participants, you can find all the Q&As and the recording of the webinar on our website webinar page. And I'd like to extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us today. Your participation and engagement have truly made this webinar a success. And we have our next session on managing end-to-end -end life cycle of legal notices online on 14th March. So please join us at uh, you know 14th March at 4 p.m. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for the patience that you've uh, given. Thank you for your questions. Looking forward to connecting with you. Thank you.